<laughs> I know, I know. I know, you may be thinking I'm some kind of COVID West Coast transplant to Montana. You may think I'm some kind of Yellowstone cowboy, but I'm here to tell you, I'm all cow and all boy. Oh, you guys, welcome in. So, today we have this great thing going on. We're going to show you one of the greatest mechanical steeds ever made. As you may or may not know, the horse market the last several years has been outrageous. The horse barn, no longer full of horses. Can't afford it. What kind of poor broke cowboy can buy a $15,000 horse? <laughs> not this one. So what we're gonna be doing is showing you the In Motion RS. If you can dream it, you can achieve it. If you can rick it, you can rack it. If you can splick it, you can splack it. You understand what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna show you what this RS is all about. I don't know what it stands for, but today it stands for Raging Steed. That ain't gonna work. We're, uh, we're gonna ditch the saddle. We're gonna rely on our boots today. Let's go. Whoa, now we're ready to go. Tell you what, I guarantee you in the history of ranching, there's never been anybody to herd cattle on an electric scooter. Wow, huh? Raging steed to the rescue. I didn't have to use my cowboy boots for nothing. Little FYI, do you guys know what this is for in a cowboy boot? This is why they call them cowboy boots. This right here hooks into the stirrup. It keeps your feet from going all the way through your stirrup and getting hung up on your saddle. If you didn't know, now you do. Guys, we gotta brand some calves. I'm gonna come back at you later. We're gonna go through the In Motion RS and I'm gonna show you some of the features and the craziness of this little machine. Kaka! Flap it and say kaka! <laughs> so, what do you think? Huh? <laughs> I hope that gave you a good laugh because that was fun. I was trying to think of something that would make you laugh. It made me laugh watching it over and editing it. So I hope it made you laugh. Anyway, uh, you see we got branding done. Weather's changed. It's getting a little cloudy, getting a little rainy. That's what we like in the springtime here, you guys. That's not what I'm here to talk about. Now that you've seen the funny, you've seen the pranks, I got to tell you the serious stuff about this In Motion RS. As you know, in the past, I have reviewed some other items, right? Some e-bikes, a few things like that. This... I'm gonna tell you right now up front is a machine on an entire different plane. This is nothing like an e-bike. This thing is a thousand percent a fine-tuned, high-performance, blow your hair back, hang on tight to the handlebars, lean into the ride type of rig. I'm telling you right now, if you do not take this thing seriously, you will be thrown off the back and left in the dust. So what takes this RS and puts it on another plane? Let me just point out a few features that set this completely aside, okay? Starting with the motor. Not one, but two, you guys. There is a motor in the front, there's a motor in the back. It's essentially a two-wheel drive scooter, all right? And, and I can attest to this, when you get on it, 
the front wheel will actually spin out. You gotta really lean forward because if you're leaning back on this thing, this front wheel is spinning out, grabbing dirt and clawing its way. Not only does it have two motors, let me put this in perspective for you. They are dual 2000 watt motors, all right? Your typical e-bike that you've seen, those are 750 watt, typically. That's kind of the, the good solid, what would you call it? The baseline for e-bikes, okay? 750 watt, 50. That makes an e-bike go about 20 miles an hour, typically 20, 25, depending on that watt rating. This machine, the InMotion RS, with dual 2000 watt motors, 68 miles an hour. I'm not filming myself going 68 miles an hour on this. Too old for that kind of thing. But I will tell you, if you're looking for something that will rip, that will rock and will roll, it's this because of that, okay? Another thing that sets this aside from an e-bike. A lot of you have asked in the comments before, I've seen this on, on my own videos, I've seen this on others' videos that I've watched uh, within the community. People often ask, will, will your e-bike regenerate when you hit the brakes? Like a car, you know, a lot of the, uh, the, hy the hybrid cars, really. In Motion has outfitted this RS with regenerative braking. So as you brake from a high rate of speed, when you're going 40 miles an hour, there's a lot of brake pressure going on in there. It does regenerate and helps recharge the battery. Part of what gives this thing a range of up to 100 miles. Here's what really gives this thing some pop and some curb appeal. Look at this suspension, okay? It's going this way, and they put, a, they put the shock from here down to here, and then they come forward again and set the axle in the front of that. It's like this reverse C-shaped suspension. Really tends to ride well in my experience so far, and just gives it this Star Wars-esque, what is this thing, some kind of land speeder type of feel. Now when it comes to the back, it's a little more standard, basically a swing arm style suspension. You've got, you've got some good travel. Now if you'll note underneath here, they do have 11 different settings for your shocks. You can uh, dial them in, dial them down either way. Currently I'm riding it as loose as it'll go, wanting the most suspension possible. That's also capable here on the front, exact same thing. I had seen in the past, there was a video when one of these very first came out. In fact, I believe it was a prototype. And the, uh, the fellow that was reviewing it had mentioned that some of these fenders and whatnot, we got this fender on the front, they come around to the back. Also this fender on the back. I believe he had said he'd had some kind of problem with his. I've driven this thing 26 miles now and zero of that 26 miles has been on any form of pavement at all whatsoever. It's been on gravel roads, county gravel roads, it's been in the gravel over here around the truck lot. I have not had any issues at all with the fender. I take that back. I had one issue with the fender. You all know what it was? I had a big old piece of cow poo got stuck up in here along with some, some old dead hay and some grass and kind of plugged in here. It didn't stop the machine, but I had to get off and uh, reverse the wheel to kick out all the manure. <laughs> so that doesn't count because I don't think very many of you are going to be taking the RS and putting it in that kind of situation. So when the RS arrived at my place, it came with these tires, all right? See those? What do they look like to you? That looks like a miniature little crotch rocket tire, and that's exactly what it is. Now right now it looks pretty flat, right? Because there's no air in the tire. When these things inflate, the edges of these tires curve clear around over here and make it so that you can get down to about a 45 degree angle while you're riding. This out as it was on the gravel, took it out, in the pastures and I'll be I'll be honest I did not care for that uh, definitely a street tire a pavement tire what I did was talk to in motion and ask did you guys offer any other kind of tires for the scooter because what I'm doing with it I don't think this is I don't think this is the best option and they said of course we do so you got these sweet little knobbies okay they're almost like a dual sport tire maybe a little more off-road than dual sport um, but these have given me great traction out in the pastures on the county road. They're able to, uh, you know, rocks and stuff that are above the surface are able to travel through some of these channels versus a tire like this. Of course, you hit a, you hit a, a rock or, you know, an obstruction in the road. You feel it because the entire, there's no place for that obstruction to go. The tire eats it and lifts you off the ground. This thing, way better shot. As far as changing these tires go, if you're a pretty competent tire person, 
you'll be okay, all right? Uh, I change a lot of tires, big semi-truck tires, dozens and dozens and dozens of semi-truck tires. So I'm kind of versed in the tire world. Uh, these still were a bit of a challenge for me at first until we figured out a few little tricks. We did change them, Freddie and I changed them right here on the bench in the shop and put those knobbies on. So what powers this beast? Right here, this is heavy. I can't remember the exact stamped weight of this machine, but it takes two of you to lift it up and down. It's gotta be all of 80 to 100 pounds, which is nice because you want that stability. Again, this is not some little bebopping machine. This is performance and you want it to stick to the road. And this right here is what sticks you to the ground. This is the battery pack. 72 volt, 40 amp hour battery. This thing will go. now. They set this thing up if you want, so that it has dual charging capabilities. Probably not necessary. Makes it look way more hardcore for sure. I have not done an actual legit battery test on this. Maybe I will at some point and do a follow-up test, but I'm gonna need to get my GoPro, GoPro put on my head and uh, bring some snacks because if this thing actually goes 100 miles, that's gonna be a long little trip. All right, let me tell you a little bit about the, the ability that this has when you put these two motors with this battery behind this little throttle right here. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit, okay? This thing has four power stages. Stage one kind of gets you up to around that 20 mile an hour mark. Throttle is pretty sluggish. You know, you really gotta pull it back to get moving. Uh, stage two is typically where I've been running around in. Stage two top speed will get you up to 40 miles an hour. The throttle becomes quite a bit more responsive, but still fairly easy going. Stage three, I really can't say how fast it goes because I haven't reached the top end of that. Taking this machine on a gravel road at 40 to 50 miles an hour is all a guy needs to do. <laughs> stage four, I have not taken stage four and gone down the road. I have taken stage four just for a short rip and stage four, I mean, it's like a, it's like a just such a hair trigger. Ooh, you barely touch this throttle and you're zipping. Now I'm not kidding. I would love at some point, somewhere, someday, to put this on stage four and do a drag race with somebody and something crazy because it will almost throw you off the back. I, I don't want to say it's dangerous. It's, it's not dangerous. Danger is all in who runs it, okay? It is high performance. It is fine-tuned and snappy. Okay, so I have it right now up on a stand. So there's no, you gotta understand, there's no friction on the ground, there's no rider on it. But just to give you an idea of what this will do freewheeling, watch this. I'm gonna put that up to stage. Yeah, we're on stage four. Here we go. You think I'm going 79 miles an hour down the highway on this thing? <laughs> Not without some serious riding gear on, okay? If you're doing that, you're definitely gonna want the helmet and the whole nine yards so you can skid down the road, should things take a turn for the worse. Now, this is not gonna go 79 miles an hour when you stand on it and get out on the pavement, but I do believe it will do all of 60 plus. I was born in the dark. <laughs> that was terrible, sorry. <laughs> Okay, look at this now. This is the light package on this baby. This is this is one of my favorite things, all right? They put these nice little chassis lights. They're almost like ground effects, okay? They light up the swing arm, come around here to the front, gives a nice glow down around your tire up in front of you. Both sides come around to the back. Another swing arm illumination and a sweet red LED tail light. Good light shooting out the front. Funny thing I noticed while we were doing our little bench test speed blast is that I have this wheel not quite mounted properly. It's mounted, but the bead's not completely centered. Did you catch there was just a tiny vibration when I wrapped that way up? That vibration is because I got to uh, let the air out of that front tire, squeeze it off the bead, soap it really good, and hit the air to it and make sure I get it good and square. Last but not least, Good for chasing cows.
Well, that's going to about wrap it up, you guys. The last thing that I want to tell you about this fun little machine, the Raging Steed, the RS from In Motion, is that waterproofing, water resistance technology is at its pinnacle with this machine, all right? It has a rating of what is called IP6. IP6 means that this machine can withstand, I quote, powerful jets of water for up to three minutes straight. So this machine is safe to wash. You can use a power washer on it. Don't get real close and crazy with it. Wash it from a decent distance. That's a powerful jet. You don't want to stick your nozzle right on everything, but this will withstand a good washing. I love that about this, okay? The next rating up, IP7, would be that you could submerse the whole thing in water for like 30 minutes or something the test is. Uh, that's not this. Do not submerse this in water. This is IP6. So now that we're done with the fun, we're gonna wash this thing off, put it away. You guys, if you're interested in this, go check it out. You got all the information in the description, in motion. Thank you for sending out this wonderful machine. It is awesome. It's gonna chase cattle and whatnot for many more years to come. You guys, until the next time, be good.